Amatuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. I've told you many times when I say I'm so blessed, I mean it. You know why? Because I'm you, you are giving me the opportunity to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit and receive words from you, from, from Him for you, receive interpretation from Him for you. Praise God. So, listen, I enjoy this moment like. I don't know what to describe it with. When, when the word of God is just coming and flowing through me. And so my prayer for you is that you are enjoying this the way I'm enjoying it. Because this is sweet. Praise God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we call for that daily bread? Hey, let's make that request. In faith, because he has asked us to do it. I told you yesterday, it's because he has commanded the angels to respond to us. So are you ready? Are you ready to receive something today? Join me right now in faith as we say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I don't know what you're believing God for. Maybe your house rent is due. Maybe there is a bill you need to meet up with today. Maybe school fees. Maybe some things you need to purchase. Maybe just whatever it is. You've made that demand today. And I pray that today will not end until that provision is given to you. And you receive it. Because God has actually given it. So now you will be led by the Holy Spirit to where it is. So be sensitive. Be sensitive today. A miracle will come your way. A call will come that will bring you blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, we are on uh, Proverbs chapter 8. We, we got into verse 18 yesterday. He says, Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. I told you yesterday that Proverbs 8 is referring to the Holy Spirit. Wisdom is the person of the Holy Spirit. It's not something that's given to us. It's a person. Praise God. He's the one speaking here. Now verse 19, it says, My fruit, I love this. My fruit is better than gold. Ah. Yes, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. Oh, Lord Jesus. He said, my fruit. Now, what fruit is he talking about? Galatians chapter 5 tells us about the fruit of the Spirit. And he tells us that this, this is the fruit of the Spirit. And he, he gave us love, joy, peace, gentleness, faith, meekness, self-control. And now, now, listen. He said here, my fruit. Now, if you notice in Galatians, he, he used the word, maybe we should quickly go there. So he said, Galatians chapter 5. Book of Galatians. Galatians. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Praise God. Watch this now. He says, but the fruit, he used the word fruit, singular. But the fruit of the Spirit is. He didn't say the fruits of the Spirit are. No, he said the fruit of the Spirit is. It is one fruit that the Holy Spirit produces. One. Now, you see love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now, you see all these things he listed are the quality of the fruits. Hmm. You know, sometimes people don't, don't get it. They say, I am praying for the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I know I have love, but I know what I'm lacking is gentleness. I'm not gentle. I think I need, I need to work on the area of my gentleness. Brothers and sisters, you don't know the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Because that love that you think you have is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. 
is the one you try to conjure by yourself. And you know what happens with such things? It will expire. Believe me, it will expire. If it's not the Holy Spirit, trust me, it will expire. When one is exhibiting fake gentleness, it will expire. A day will come when someone will touch on that your last nerve, like they say. Aya na iko di abarishi. You will, you will destroy everything. I know. I thought this guy was gentle. I thought that lady was very gentle. Oh no, she wasn't, because it wasn't by the Holy Spirit. See now, now that's why I'm, I'm explaining to you that it is one fruit. See, understand? It is one fruit. Now, this one fruit have all these qualities. So if you have it, they are all there. It's like you say, you're trying to describe a mango fruit. See that now? Now you, you're trying to describe a mango fruit to someone. And you say, look, this is how a mango fruit is. The, it has a peel and the peel can be green or the peel can be red. Sometimes the peel can be yellow. You see that now? And then he said, after the peel, it has the, the edible part. And that edible part mostly is yellow. And then after the edible part, it has a seed. Now the seed has a covering. Inside that covering is the actual seed itself. And it's white. See that? Now, you are describing one fruit and it has all these attributes to it. What are you trying to tell the person? If you don't see all those attributes, you are not dealing with a mango seed or a mango fruit. Are you getting that? Now? So when he says the fruits, meaning the Holy Spirit is in us, and, and you know Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And you know the fruit is produced at the branches. You get that now? So we are the ones that produce the fruit. So he says, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy. Now, when you are yielded, Jesus said, abide in me. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. What does it mean, much fruit? He's not saying plenty, plenty. He said the, the, the intensity of your fruit will be seen if you abide in in him so when you see a man who's loving but he doesn't abide in jesus <laughs> that's not love my brother that's not love my sister and it will soon show praise god all right then let's go back to proverbs now now you understand what he meant by fruit okay so let's explain verse 8 now chapter 8 sorry and verse 19 it says my fruit i told you the holy spirit is talking my fruit is better than gold hey it is better for you to yield yourself to him that he will produce his fruits in you that is far better than going for gold mm. so sometimes when the holy spirit begins to talk to you about being gentle what is he doing? For example, someone someone annoys you so much and the Holy Spirit tells you, keep quiet. Don't say a word. Mm. Oh, don't say a word. Now, what's he doing in you? He's trying to bear his fruit in you. It's as simple as that. Now, so you keep quiet. You keep watching. You keep watching. Let's, let us all say, man, you are so gentle. I never knew where this is gentle. <laughs> now what happened in that situation you just bore fruit and that fruit was from him now he said putting yourself under that pressure at that moment so that you bear his fruit is better than thinking of how much you would lose if you keep quiet mm. did you get that that's why it says, my fruit, paying attention to my fruit is far better than gold. It says, yes, better than fine gold. Fine gold are the most expensive gold. It says, better. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. Think about it. Think about it. Not being angry at the situation and responding the way I feel I should respond because I, I can feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit telling me don't get angry or don't take that action. He says, that is far better. Because sometimes the reason we react is because we feel um, someone is going to take advantage of us. So we react that way. Now, of course, this doesn't mean you make yourself a doormat for everybody to ride on you. You understand? It's always good you keep your honor, especially when people are concerned. Jesus, the Bible says, he knew what was in men, so he never gave himself over to men. See, there are many times you, you, you love people, you trust people, but you must also learn to keep your honor so people don't abuse it. And the moment you sense that one is, is, is toying with your honor, you need to really think deep about how to handle that relationship because it's going to affect the person also. Now, that's the truth of our life. You see that? But now when you do these things, you don't do it by yourself. You do it through the Holy Spirit. So when you sense that, you go before him and say, Lord, what do you think? How do I handle this situation? And you listen for his voice. Now his voice is actually the voice of wisdom. Praise God. Yeah. So he, you listen for his voice. And then he tells you, you know what? Don't react the way you want to react. Oh, someone is owing me some money. I, I want to take it out on the person. He said, no, don't react that way. But Lord, if I don't react that way, he will give me my money. I know this guy. The Lord says, no, don't react. Ah. Now you begin to think, ah, maybe I'll just lose this money. Now, even if the Holy Spirit tells you, let that money go. He said, your responding to him is far better than fine gold. Think about it. So, so someone is owing someone, you really want to go take it out and he said, don't do it, don't do that. Stay at home. Don't go. No. This guy is taking advantage of me. He says, don't. So what, what do you want me to do? And sometimes, now not in all cases, I want you to understand, so don't take this for as one for all. You know. Sometimes he can tell you, I want you to let it go. Let it go. Yes, I want you to let it go. Lord, I'm going to lose that money. Yes, I want you to let it go. Mm. 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 I know somebody that can call you. He <laughs> said, no, 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 don't. Let it go. So what do I do? Then he says, I want you to call that person up and tell the person that he doesn't need to pay you that money again. That you are releasing it as a seed into his life. Because now he's telling you, let it go. Okay, let's just keep quiet about it. Maybe one day you will touch his heart and he will come and give you that money. But he now goes the step further and says, I want you to take up your phone and call the person and tell the person that you are releasing that money as a seed into his life. So is that possible? Yes, it's possible. I learned this many years ago. It's called the seed of equal benefits, meaning it's a seed. Now, you, you can do that even when, when money is stolen from you. You can release that money that was stolen from you as a seed of equal benefit. So it's just as if you willingly sowed that seed. And you're going to get blessed for that. Praise God. Now that's why you realize a Christian can never, never be disadvantaged. Never. No one who works with the Holy Spirit will ever be disadvantaged. You remember Abraham and Lot? Abraham noticed that the strife brewing. What did he do? Now, God had told him he would give him all those lands. But Abraham at that point willingly ceded his land to Lot. He said, Lot, choose. Anywhere you take, it's yours. And Lot, Lot, Lot made his decision. Abraham said, oh, it's fine. You can go. You can have it. The Bible said God showed up immediately. Lot left. And what did God say? Abraham, get up. Look north, south, east, west. As far as your eyes can see, I have given it to you. Now you see, his fruit is better than fine gold. Mm. Let's do one more verse before we round off for today. He says, I transverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice. Now you can see 
when he begins to lead you, there are, there are certain things that you expect to happen. If the Holy Spirit gets you to judge a matter, there are certain things that will happen. Now, he says, I transverse the way of righteousness. He would not let you get into anything that is unrighteous. He won't. He wouldn't do that. I transverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice. Now, he will cause you to walk through that path and not everybody will be satisfied. He will tell you to take side with one person against the other person. If, if you are called to judge a situation, he wouldn't do that. See? Now, some people don't like that. Some people just want you to side with them because they are your friend. You know, you're supposed to side with me. Now, the truth is this. If you walk with the Holy Spirit, you will not side with anybody. You will walk the path of righteousness. You will walk the path of justice. Now, what, what does it mean a path of justice? Everybody gets their due. Now, that's the truth. Praise God. Yes. It says, Oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. I transverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Ah, now, we read this at like pause and think. So he's going to lead me to walk through the path of righteousness and in the midst of the path of justice. What's the reason? That he may cause those who love him. I told you this, is the Holy Spirit speaking. That he may cause those who love him. Anyone who loves the Holy Spirit. Look at it. They will inherit wealth. Hmm. He didn't say that they will struggle to get wealth no 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 he said they will in now take note of that word inherit he's not talking about what you labored for he's not talking about what you sweated for no he is talking about what you inherit inherit god don't have parents who are rich he will inherit he didn't say from your parents you will surely inherit <laughs> the question is are you following him if you are genuinely following him you will inherit wealth He's the one that will cause it to happen, not you. It's not a prayer point. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up. We're going to still talk about this verse tomorrow. Praise God. I pray for you right now. Receive now the instruction of wisdom. And find the courage in your heart to follow him diligently. Into every good thing that he will provide for you. And Jesus mighty name i pray amen god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye